Briggs Farm presents Pudding on the Show. So here we are at Briggs Farm, where we have two workers who put in countless hours year in and year out to make this happen. What we have is we have David Top the ticket booth. It's going to be new for 2011. Just uh, what one we have is just getting day. access to our backstage. Yeah. So what if we if that think about it, if we move everything out, then someone comes in, they can split over. We can get to our backstage over here or something, like drive along behind it or something. And then the fence continues off this way and this way. So you come in here and the signs tell you where to go. Stage, camping. We filled our parking lots last year to the brim and we've had to add, uh, we're going <laughs> to add about seven acres of additional parking. and. This new location for the gate really isn't a new location. It's it's a it's the camping gate. Now we're talking about making that the main entrance for everything, and that's centrally located. So it'll be a shorter distance from, on average, all the cam all the parking, and that's the the main thing. It helps us out a little bit because we can concentrate our employees in in one area. Uh, that's part of the pros. The cons, really, we we're not sure. There's going to be some cons. I guess a lot of it is like you take. 24 years of people going in one direction and try to change that, it, it tends to surprise you. There was like the one gate and then there were the three lanes. Oh, my, the look, lines. This drug? <laughs> but if we take the, oh, see that square in the middle? Yeah. Put one on the right and one on the left, outside of the gate, <clears throat> outside of the fence. And then you have three roads coming. You better, Richard, you better do it. I like it, Richard. Camp bill, camp ticket area, Main gate ticket area uh, and three roads. One, two, three. So then, <clears throat> so the, the woods is like here. If we put one here, whatever that shape may be, because this isn't. This will be behind the gate, right? <laughs> They're gonna go. Well, we can have this one. When there's a lot of people, that'll be good. Yeah. And then that could be sort of, you know, abandoned later and everybody can sort of go to here. So, like when it's busy, this will be used and this will be used. I like where we're going with this. I'm just curious, you're going to have cars and people pretty close together. So everybody camping in general would, might go through there if we decide to do it. So we're coffee. separating the campers. You want to separate the camp traffic from the backstage traffic. But then the walking traffic's got to go in front of it to get into here. So there's no vehicles going into the audience area, but there's walkers that go in there. So you'll have to, once once the entrance, the uh, early entrance ticket taking is over, then this will be freed up. You know, you think about audiovisual, it's a, literally half of what you're, you know, feeling or seeing when you're checking out a video or something, you know, does it sound good? You know, is the quality there? Is there enough bass, treble, is it mixed? You know, how it was captured? Um, so, you know, you really want to try to focus on getting the best quality sound you can to add into all the other video editing that would go into the, you know, project after the fact. <laughs> Good. How are you? Cold. <laughs> Dude, I'm sweating. Really? Yeah, I'm dying. I was dying in there. <laughs> it was hot. I was so hot, hot all in there. The time. I, just, I was playing with my grandfather and his band, and Dave was playing banjo with Louis Setzer. We were at a festival in uh, New York State called Busy Bird Bluegrass Festival, and I remember I had a really bad set. I broke like two or three strings. I was just really upset when I got off stage and in a really, really bad mood, and then. Dave comes walking over, you know, chipper and happy. And he's like, hey, that was a great, <laughs> great set you played. And I was like, oh, thanks. You know, it wasn't that great. And he goes, we could jam. And, you know, I, I, Dave, as I know now, Dave was pretty well known in the, in the bluegrass circuit. I'd never met him. And uh, as we walked over to, our, to my campsite to, to play stuff, my grandfather was like, hey, I didn't know you knew Dave Cabbage. And I was like, who's Dave Cabbage? And he played and blew me away. And I was like, all right, this guy's the real deal. And that's that's how when we first met. And then uh, through Anthony Hannigan, I got hooked up with the Hickory Project. And we started playing shows like that together. And that spawned into this duo. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> My yes. memory probably is not as sharp yeah. as John. You have anything better than that story? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Sound 
It didn't really come from a specific thing. I don't think because my parents told me that I uh, sang to myself in the crib and stuff like that. So I think I always just wanted to sing and I would sing along to the radio a lot. And um, I loved poetry. And then eventually I was playing guitar and in different instruments. And I thought, why not try and put the two things together and never really looked back. It didn't like, have a purpose to become a musician when I first started writing. It was just... Um, another way to express myself, I guess. Someday I know I'll be ready when it's time to go and someday soon you know it can't be long You can catch me complaining when I'm six feet in the ground I'm really excited. There's a little bit of a return to rock, which I'm a 90s kid, so you know, I've always loved like the rock sound and the, the full band sound. Um, and so there's not any pedal steel on this record, but there is harmonica and I have some string band tunes, which I'm really excited with the full string band. And I have a co-write with Kyle Tuttle, who's another banjoist in town. And that's like a double banjo tune with Billy Contreras on fiddle. It's just like really exciting to finally be able to share these songs with everybody and have them had you know, such awesome people on them because Nashville is just this gold mine of great musicians. So yeah, I think you should expect some good music. <laughs> Next time on Pudding on the show. I said this, I think I said this up at the show, like, we're probably not going to do a series anymore. It was like, we tried to do something too great. We certainly marketed the hell out of it, the last one. We can't yeah. blame ourselves for any mistakes on that. <laughs> we could book some cover band and it fills this place, some cheesy cover band, and then we try to book original live music. So, and it's like it's that's like what people. I'm thinking. And maybe that is what will spur if that's the right word, all the people, the local people is what we're trying to get. Like, we're, yeah, so we've like, gotten the far away people that care about those bands. We were up against a Van Halen cover band. Yeah. yeah. So, so Van Halen cover band. Like, or right like that. And the there was another venue Paul that Hanks just fruit. Then there was a venue that just opened in Bloomsbury that same day. Yep. Brand new that had a hundred people attend that. That no was like doubt. a fifteen dollar charge, and that, that definitely affected, that affected our draw from Bloomsbury.